Hello, I'm Charles Coves, Australasia's passion provocateur. Welcome to this week's episode of the Charles Coves Show. In this week's episode, I explore psychological buzzwords that can destroy your work teams and your business or your organization. Words like, I'm not feeling safe. I don't feel respected. I'm feeling psychologically unsafe. I'm feeling bullied. I'm feeling harassed. I'm feeling sexually harassed. Some unwanted glances have made me feel uncomfortable and so on. You need to learn how to handle comments like this, stuff like this, and discern the truth from BS, from crap. What are the principles for being able to do that? Stick around. I have six of them for your consideration that I have developed from my 50 plus years of business experience, sporting experience, team and organizational experience. I promise you they will be of value. This weekly show is presented on the foundation of the formula SA plus P equals S. Self-awareness plus passion equals success. Your self-awareness with your passion will give you success. And success is the progressive realization of your worthy ideal. Since 1993, when I left my successful legal career, I have inspired, provoked and educated audiences, teams, individuals to discover and pursue passion, to live their lives with passion. I've done that through my books, Passionate People Produce, Passionate Performance, through workshops, as a professional speaker, at conferences and one-on-one -on -one executive coaching. After 28 years, I would have stopped doing this if I knew it didn't work. It works. It changes lives. It can change your life if you aren't living the life that you have always dreamed about. This show is also guided by Socrates' famous saying, the unexamined life is not worth living. So I hope I provoke you to examine your life. I hope I provoke you to provoke those around you to examine their lives. You can see I'm wearing my red jacket, red the color of passion, so that when you see red in your day-to-day -day dealings, for those of you watching, as distinct from those of you on the podcast, it will remind you to live your life with passion, to keep working to discover your passion and to pursue your passion. Now, you know, there's certain, there are certain ways that you can pursue passion. That's a whole different episode, which I will go more deeply into. But I have found it is always possible for any human being to pursue their passion, unless that passion is to do nothing. And of course, you can pursue that. So I'm wrong there, aren't I? Ha! Each week I explore one big idea that can change your life. One big idea because too many ideas confuse us. One idea that might appeal to you, you take action with that idea. I also share with you some practical tools to reinforce that idea. A song, a book, a quote, a spiritual tip, a health tip and some humour. Life was definitely not meant to be taken seriously. I think we take it far too seriously. So I hope while I'm passionate about these topics, you understand that we are meant to be playful souls, playful spirits. And that leads me to the view that I subscribe to the view that we have a soul, a spirit, human spirit, a remarkable resource. Team spirit is what makes teams great, much more than just mental and physical capabilities. I also support addictions and I abhor political correctness and certain addictions such as coffee, drinking my Republican beans today. Hmm. Thank you, Pete. So not an espresso today, but Australian coffee beans that I ground this morning and put in the coffee cup. Yum. So What's happened this week before we get into the big idea? 
Well, what a remarkable Sunday it is when I'm recording this. Last night was the Wimbledon final in Wimbledon in the UK in tennis and Ash Barty won the ladies championship and it was 50 years ago that Yvonne Goolagong won it for Australia. Great outcome. We've got Euro 2020, England against Italy tomorrow morning, 5 a.m. Melbourne time in, in football, soccer, as we call it here in Australia. We've got the Tour de France. We're up to stage 14. Remarkable. The pain and suffering. That's a theme of what I'm going to be saying later. The pain and suffering of those cyclists. I mean, I cycle every day or exercise or run or swim, but mainly I've been focusing on cycling during all these crazy COVID lockdowns. But the Tour de France, you want to see what the price you need to pay for success is? Watch that. Also, three years ago, I went with a group to the Alps in France, rode Mont Ventoux, amongst other places, amongst other mountains. What a remarkable experience. What remarkable geography, topography. Gosh, it's so, it's such a joy watching the filming of that tour. Amazing. Anyway, three amazing sporting events. Tour de France, Wimbledon, Euro 2020. And yet, at the same time, we have police state in New South Wales. We have lockdowns. We have crazy premiers acting like this coronavirus is going to slaughter us, and therefore we need to be locked down. We've got police on horses policing the Delta variant. If you read anything about this, this Delta variant, every time I see this, I literally laugh. Delta variant. The nonsense that this is incredibly, incredibly contagious when the death rate from people with COVID is across the world, 0.16% of those who get COVID. And we are destroying economies, lives. That's what's in the news. And now there's this conversation going on. You have to have a vaccine if you want to do A, B, C, and D, but vaccines aren't compulsory. And I, den I deny that this is a vaccine. It is a gene manipulating jab, but that's what's in the news this week. So here we have this amazing sporting events at the same time as police state as taking away your freedom. Please play a part in understanding this game. Do not be squashed into submission by lies from the government, from chief health officers. We're also seeing small to medium enterprises going into liquidation, going into bankruptcy. They have, after almost 18 months of destroyed, of, of business destroyed, government largesse handing out money, they're going under. And I predict that more will go under. There will be far more deaths by suicide, far more depression incidents, far more people simply giving up living life in the ways that I talk about in this show. The price we are paying for this ridiculous suppression of human activity, I say is criminal by our politicians on both sides of the camp in Australia and around the world. And I'm making it my business to take action to, to ensure that those criminal decisions will be prosecuted. I was a lawyer, as you know, I have got legal connections. I am in touch with lawyers around the world pushing back against this criminal behaviour by politicians who ignore science, who ignore alternative views and impose on us absolutely unjustifiable restrictions. It is destroying lives in many, many countries, far more negative impact than anything that COVID could do, a mere flu. This brings back to me memories of the Roman Empire. So here we've got these amazing, wonderful sporting events and vast numbers of people suffering. In ancient Rome, that's why they built the Colosseum. If you look at Roman history, the Romans built the Colosseum to entertain the unemployed every second day. There was a show on. 
that's like what we've got now. We've got all these great sporting events to distract people from the important work of fighting for our freedom, for fighting for being able to live life the way that we want it without nonsensical rules being imposed on us for no good cause or grossly insufficient cause. Roman Empire then collapsed. I predict that if we keep going down this track, Western society is going to dramatically collapse and America is leading the way in my view. So, now to our big idea. Before I do, I invite you to visit our websites, coves.com for public programs, for corporate programs, and charlescoves.com for details of the self-awareness and passion quest. Come on that quest and rejuvenate your life. I again refer you to my books, Passionate People Produce and Passionate Performance. Come to our websites if you would like a, the self-awareness and passion quest manifesto. Just fill in the form on the site and I'll happily send it to you. It will help guide you in your decision making. So the big idea today is psychological buzzwords and I want to discuss some psychological buzzwords that can destroy your work teams, can destroy your organizations. You need to learn how to handle the complex crap, the complex BS that is being raised in the name of psychological safety. Life is complex. Human beings are complex. Life is getting even more complex. Relationships are complex. Any of you that are in relationships know how complicated they get. Now, as you know, I've been successfully married three times. I know the complexity of relationships. People are complex, difficult, and are weirdos, as you heard me say on previous episodes. But psychological buzzwords are proliferating more and more. It's a bit like DSM-5, the American Psychological Society handbook for discerning all these mental illnesses that I've talked about in previous episodes, like, like all this incredible complexity of human beings. And the, and the buzzwords are along the lines of, I'm not feeling safe. I don't feel respected. This is not a psychologically safe workplace. I'm being bullied. I feel like I'm being bullied. I'm being harassed. I feel like I'm being harassed, sexually harassed. Some of my work colleagues are giving me unwanted glances that are making me feel uncomfortable. Let me say this. You are a leader. If you're listening to this show, you are a leader. How do I know that? Because you would not be able to listen to this show if you didn't have those leadership qualities. And there are two types of leaders. There are positional leaders, people who are in positions of leadership, and there's situational leadership. And that is when you act like a leader in the situation in which you find yourself. I say you are a leader. You need to learn how to handle these psychological buzzwords. You need to discern the crap. If you don't learn how to handle these buzzwords, you will fail. I promise you, you will get nowhere near the results that you want. And any team that allows these buzzwords to thrive in an environment when they're not truth will be destroyed from the inside. And then when teams break down, the organization breaks down. So let me give you six key principles to handle this stuff, this, this complex discernment challenge. Number one, you must pick the right people in your team. If you're a leader of a team and you don't have requisite authority, that is a very difficult thing to do because you can be accountable for an outcome of the team, but you don't have authority to change the members of your team. Picking the right people in a team, I think I'll have to make that a whole episode. How do you do that? Understanding the, the expanding proliferation of buzzwords will help you when you pick the next person in your team 
bearing the principles I'm sharing with you in mind today to make sure that you pick people in the right way so that you can handle these psychological buzzwords. The second principle is to create the right culture in your team. Now you can create a culture in your team even if you're part of the 10th biggest company in Australia. I have done work for the top four banks in Australia and each team in those banks behaves differently, some in significant ways, some in small ways, but each team has a culture. My favorite definition of culture is what culture is what people do when nobody's telling them what to do. So decide, design the culture that you want in your team. Principle number three. Remember the saying in the Old Testament, without a vision, the people perish. A vision unites complex human beings, weirdos, every single one of them, around a compelling idea, around a compelling vision. And there's a saying that when one thing unites us, it overcomes all of our divisions. So here we are talking about Euro 2020 or supporting Ash Barty as Australians at the Wimbledon final. Because we're all supporting a particular team, that overcomes our differences. And that's the point about a vision for a team. When there is a compelling vision, it helps us to overcome psychological crap psycho babble it's a very it's 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 like it it you you're in the, all the crap and the day-to-day -day crap but suddenly you've got this picture in the future of how exciting the future is going to be and suddenly the crap doesn't matter the psycho babble disappears because each member of the team is excited about achieving that vision the fourth principle Understand the most important principle of great teams. There are two key elements of great teams. And that is that team members trust each other and care about each other. I'll use the love word here. They trust and love each other. I've worked with top class sporting teams, even buffhead rugby league players. When they win a premiership, they publicly say, I love my teammates. When you have a compelling vision, your job, your job is to understand that we're weirdos, but it's trust and love that helps us push down the unnecessary psychological buzzwords. When people feel loved and feel trusted, they're not interested in using these psychological buzzwords. This trust and love question is another episode all of its own. And that's another, there you are, Julie, we'll have to keep writing all these notes about all these possible episodes. Like I'm, I'm up, this is up episode 67, dear viewer, dear listener, episode 67. But I reckon I've got about another 250 episodes to go before I run out of things to say, and then other stuff will arise. So you got me for a long time. The fifth principle, do not capitulate on your principles, on your values in the team. So when somebody says, I'm feeling harassed, I'm, I'm feeling depressed, I'm feeling unsafe, I need time off, and then they sue you for, for workplace injury, do not capitulate because you will know whether it's BS or not. And companies get reputations for being weak in front of compensation courts if you are if you capitulate on your principles you will be a sitting duck for every person who in a team in your organization that wants to rip you off because they know that you will give up do not give up on your principles that's why you have to clarify what the principles are what the culture is and you fight for that and you pay a price for that fight, but you pay a bigger price if you don't fight. The sixth principle, be human. By that I mean, there are circumstances where 
truth is at play and it's not psychological buzzwords but it's psychological damage and you have human beings who will make mistakes you are leading a team of human beings who make mistakes just like i make mistakes in my relationships be human and so as soon as you realize there's a real problem then come back to the trust and love space come back to the on behalf of the team i say sorry and be genuine about it and say gosh we've stuffed up here this is not good what can we do to make sure this doesn't happen again and be genuinely sorry because it really happened rather than it's made up as a figment of a person's imagination each one of us is remarkably flawed we the only way we advance is by making mistakes so if in your culture you allow people to be human and if suddenly if someone gave a cuddle to somebody else and that person was offended and it was not just oh look i was offended and blah blah you say look you don't like being cuddled other people do okay everybody olivia doesn't like being cuddled don't cuddle her olivia doesn't like being kissed don't kiss her so suddenly we've stopped being human by not showing empathy by affection for other human beings because that might lead to any sexual innuendo we pay a big price when we stop being human and i think that's part of the cultural wars that are going on now with cancel culture with woke and you have to make a decision whether you're going to fight with me and push back against such nonsense which is contrary to truth contrary to reason and contrary to what we are as human beings with minds and bodies and spirits so the book this week the resources to help you access or implement this week's big idea the book is leading with soul leading with soul an uncommon journey of spirit it'll give you some great ideas on implementing trust and love and your humanity in the workplace successfully i've been doing this for 28 years i promise you it works you can be human and achieve outstanding results my quote this week is from gary ryan blair sooner or later each of us must come to the understanding that neither freedom nor success is free and that we either pay the price of success or pay the cost of failure you have a choice either you want your teams to be successful and you pay that price by implementing these principles or you pay the cost of failure my song this week is true colors sung by Cindy Lauper and one of the writers of that song was Justin Timberlake just as by way of interest but it's a beautiful song and showing your true colors and this message today for you as a leader is to be willing to show your true colors do not be cowed into silence do not capitulate on your principles there's a beautiful line in this so don't be afraid to let them show your true colors true colors are beautiful i see your true colors shining through i see your true colors and that's why i love you you see it's your truth that is lovable and as a team member stop trying to pretend that you are perfect that you have all the answers none of us has all the answers that's why teams work and when team members are willing to show their true colors where they're not criticized for showing their true colors you unleash genius now some workplaces some workplaces particularly when I'm thinking of public service big organizations the psychological buzzwords have taken over so for a bit of humor here are some of the things i'm sure you'd love to say out loud at work but you wouldn't number one i can see your point but i still think you're full of crap number two i don't know what your problem is but i'm sure it's hard to pronounce number three 
I see you've set aside this special time to humiliate yourself in public. Number four, I'm really easy to get along with once you people learn to see it my way. Hmm. And number five, I'll try being nicer if you'll try being smarter. <laughs> oh, they make me laugh, these. Anyway, whoever wrote them, they're very clever. And my health tip this week is do some research on your sleep patterns. I'm reading more and more about the impact of sleep. We're getting better knowledge around sleep, understanding your sleep patterns. I've got one of my friends who's whose wife has just been through a, a sleep pattern assessment process. It is. It seems to be a crucial element in your health. It has all sorts of unintended consequences if you have sleep problems. And then when you work out what the problem is and solve it, it can lead to massive health improvement. My spiritual tip, relative, of course, to this psychological buzzword problem, is for you to consider how you would express to work colleagues that you love them. How would you express that in your soul, in your spirit, in your heart, you actually love them? Scary idea. How would you show that you care about them and express that you love them? That's the six tips. That's the six additional resources. Think about the impact that psychological buzzwords, if they are not genuine, are creating havoc in many, many teams and workplaces. Think about the six principles I've shared with you and implementing them to make a significant difference in the teams that you lead. And if you don't handle these psychological buzzwords, your team won't function. I again invite you to visit our websites, covest.com, charlescovest.com. Ask for a copy of the Self-Awareness and Passion Quest Manifesto. Sign up for Passion Points to Ponder. Check out my books, Passionate People Produce, Passionate Performance. If you enjoy this show, please subscribe to the YouTube or the podcast. Please share with your family, with your friends with your networks, I'll be most grateful. And until next week, may you continue to live life with passion, to embrace the challenges that come your way, to live life loving your life and loving those around you, and choose to enjoy whatever happens to you. Thanks for being with us. I look forward to being with you next week. Bye.